Yo! What's up, creepers? How the heck are you guys? It's Clearski. I'm back. It's a cold Saturday here, but the sun is poking its head through. I'm in southeast Portland today, one of my favorite places to be. And if you guys can see behind me, it's kind of hard to see, but right here, I'm on the corner of southeast 30th and Taylor today, coming to you guys from a really cool place. Um, another connection to Portland, which I thought was awesome. Um, and if you guys can see better now here, I'll focus the camera in here on the street sign. But I'm on the corner of Southeast Taylor and 30th. And I'm going to take you guys to a place today that I thought was really cool. Um, that not only has a really cool tie to Portland, um, but is a significant spot for a very famous artist um, that isn't born here in Portland, but spent a lot of his years here in Portland recording music and eventually went on to do big things. Um, actually was nominated at one point for a Oscar and was tied in with Gus Van Zant, who was a famous director here in Portland. After Gus listened to some of his work, um, he asked him to do some of the music for the soundtrack for Goodwill Hunting. Um, so I thought that was really cool, but right here stands the house where the original and first debut album from Mr. Sam, I'm sorry, Mr. Steve Smith, betterly known as Mr. Elliot Smith. And Elliot was born, like I said, in Nebraska, um, where he was raised by his mom, but eventually moved here to Portland and started recording music with a band better known by the Heat Miser. And they went on to do a lot of recordings here in Portland, but Elliot wanted to kind of up the game and debuted his first court recording album here titled Roman Candle. Um, so I thought that was really cool and it was actually recorded right here in the basement of this property. Um, now there was many stipulations as whether Elliot was still with the band at the time that he wanted to decided to go solo. Um, but it, it was a hit and during the recording production of the songs it was basically him doing all the instruments himself and he recorded on a really crummy four track cassette deck. Um, but that kind of gave his music a different kind of different vibe. Um, his voice was really quiet and his music was really different from what was known as kind of the grunge scene at the time. And Nirvana and a lot of people from Seattle where he was uh, touring at the time as well were doing different music. Hi. Hi. I'm just curious. I live in the house. Oh, yeah. The musician used to live here. Yeah, that's Elliot Smith's home. No, I actually I'm... do a vlog. Uh, he actually um, lived here with his girlfriend at one point. I'm Christopher. I'm Lewis. I do a vlog for YouTube Elliot called... Elliot Smith, no way. Yeah, I do a vlog for YouTube um, called Clearski the Creeper. So Clearski I'll... the Creeper? Clearski the Creeper. Is that C-L... K-L-E-A-R... SKI. If you just type in Clearski, I think I have enough cloud. Okay. It might pop I'm up. But late. That's awesome. awesome. Hey, so thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, definitely, I'll see you in the comment section. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see you there. So, yeah, that was cool. I guess that's the owner of the home. So, apparently, he's cool with me filming. <laughs> I was worried about that. So, um, yeah, so to get back to my story, um, he was touring in Seattle at the time and did a lot of um, different. Uh, openings for acts but the grunge scene was really big so his style of music was kind of different at the time um, so in 94 he submitted a bunch of songs for a record that he was thinking that would only basically have like a couple hit songs um, at the time but the record company called Kill Rock Stars actually decided to pick up the entire album and it was released um, and it was released July 14th of 1994 and like I said the record rec was recorded really raw um, some of the music that was performed um, was actually done on uh, some instruments that he actually purchased at a, the local store that actually still exists to this day called Artichoke Music which is just uh, two blocks north of us so he actually traded um, one of the microphones that he had for the recording device and then he actually purchased a dynamite to make the recording a little bit better um, so 
it was picked up really quick um, and there's actually a YouTube video titled Bucky 3 Elliot Smith and if you go to about the seven minute mark you guys can see more of the different locations around Portland that he filmed at um, which I might actually take you guys to here in a minute and do a part two to this um, which is Lad's Edition where he did a lot of filming and actually a house that he grew up in as well. Now this was his girlfriend's house at the time, JJ, and him and JJ um, recorded a lot of different music. They, they lived here with different uh, musicians at the time and it was known that the drummer, I believe, for the Shins at one point lived here as well later on. Um, but unfortunately, with all of his success, Elliot moved to New York and eventually to LA and like I said in 1998 Gus Van Zant was doing his movie Goodwill Hunting and basically started his career off to major success. Um, now unfortunately Elliot suffered from a lot of drug and alcohol abuse in his life so he um, basically had some problems and was found unconscious dead um, with multiple stab wounds to the chest um, in 2003 is when he died and so Basically, the coroner report was that it was a suicide, but when they did further, uh, you know, work involving the case, they realized that he was un under no influence of any drugs or alcohol at the time, and actually the stab wounds that were inflicted, um, there was no hesitation wounds, which is normal in like a suicide. So they weren't sure if it was a suicide or a murder at this point. Uh, but his most popular song that was in the Goodwill Hunting was titled Miss Misery. And there is a tremendous amount of songs that he writ that he wrote um, that dealt a lot with Portland and actually were titled um, that were titled that were basically involving Portland. So one of the songs Rose Parade, which signifies Portland Rose City parade that we do every year. Um, and one of the songs Punch and Jay, he actually met, mentions Division Street, which is just a block over, and how he used to like coming down Division Tr Street, but it's changed. Um, and then he also saw, has a song called Alameda, which is a street sign here in Portland, a street name here in Portland. So a lot of ties to Portland, a lot of great things accomplished out of this house, and apparently he recorded a lot of the music down in the basement, and he also spent a lot of the time recording in the closet because it gave a good harmony and the house was um, toured not too long ago and one of the artists um, that toured it said that it had very good acoustics being an old style Victorian style home so that's pretty cool that that was recorded there and I definitely wanted to take you guys there and show you what a iconic house not only symbolizing such a great artist that did so much and accomplished so much, um, but that, that has ties to Portland. So I love you guys. This is the time now you can take to hit that thumbs up button. That way uh, this video can circulate a little bit and you guys can also take the time to maybe share this video. You can do me one better. You can hit that little bell icon. That way when I creep, you guys will be the first to creep. So uh, that was pretty cool that the owner came out at the time too and he wasn't quite sure if Elliot had lived there or not. So who knows, he might show up in the comment section. And so with that being said, I love you guys. Like I said, I might do a part two to this, so stay tuned. And with that being said, Creeper out for now. Peace guys.